Hey, what's up, everybody? <clears throat> this is Infamous. We are coming back with a new build that I have been working on, almost done. This is the hybrid Templar build. Uh, so going right into the build, um, what makes this build very viable, as you can see here, I want everybody to take a look at the, this is a no CP build, no CP build. Um, we're running with 25.5k health, 17.5k Magicka with 30k Stam. The regen, this is our region with a tripod up. We'll go in a little more in depth about how we're sustaining on this build. And as you can see, we're sporting 4200 both weapon and spell damage. And we'll, and we'll go into uh, a little bit more about the gear. We're running 20% crit, and of course, uh, Templars gain an extra 10% bonus to their critical damage abilities. So we'll get that for both weapon uh, and spell, as well as running 26,000 spell resistance with 24, almost 24.5 uh, physical resistance, as well as 1,000 in critical resistance, which is more than enough. It's 16%, 60% uh, critical resistance that's just perfect um, going into the build as you know with any hybrid build you're always going to be running the five piece Pelino set um, basically what this does is it allows you to make your physical your uh, weapon damage equal to your spell damage and so basically we're stacking max weapon damage on this particular build to gain the bonus to our spell damage as well as their the uh, tooth piece gives us HP. We're running a triglyph on this, uh, we, and we gain, of course, the stamina recovery and the magicka recovery. Uh, we're running four pieces of impen, and we're running the rest in sturdy. Um, because this is a 6 1 medium build, we are running the black rose set, and of course, the black rose gives us uh, 1200 HP, 1000 stamina, 1000 magicka increases our physical and spell damage by 154 and of course we gain the bonus to the constitution passage which of course constitution every time we get hit we will roughly gain about a thousand uh currently on live i'm running it as a seven heavy build uh, but you can run it as a five one to hit that thirty thousand mark which is what i like i uh, like to hit thirty thousand uh basically as my main uh, resource pool from so going back into it we're running uh, the black row set with all weapon damage and robust we're running a nern hone uh, on our front bar with a oh we're not gonna run that glyph we're gonna go ahead and run the new weapon um, damage one on the builder it's not updated but on live this does physical damage and returns stamina on our back bar, we're running an infused great sword. You can run an infused axe if you prefer. <coughs> Excuse me, on live, uh, I I didn't I wasn't able to uh, make the axe, so I went with the great sword. It works out just fine. And of course, we're running a weapon glyph on the back bar, and that's how we're getting that 4200 weapon and spell damage. This is a sword and shield build, so a lot of our, our damage is going to come from light attack bash as well as pierce armor 
The benefit of running Pierce Armor, it's very cheap. Um, it gives us both major fracture as well as major breach. We are running one uh, magic ability here for, uh, for offense as well as gaining Radiant Glory on our front bar for a Sword and Shield build that has an Execute. For uh, our stun, we're running Binding Javelin, and the reason that we're running Binding Javelin is because we want to take advantage of both Spear Wall, which increases our critical damage by 10%, as well as increasing the damage we do to blocking targets by 10%, as well as the new Spear Wall Passage, which is whenever you activate uh, basically, whenever you activate an ability within the Aegic Spear, we gain 3 seconds of Minor Protection, which is 8% damage reduction. We'll also be able to proc Burning Light, but that will only be when we cast uh, Binding Javelin. We have a 25% chance to do an extra 44-58 damage. And of course, Balance Warrior increases our weapon damage by 6% which of course correlates to an increase in our spell damage as well by 6%. For our Dawn's Wrath ability, we are running Reflective Light on the back bar. That will give us um, a slow as we have no gap closer. It'll also give us some range, range abilities. Uh, we're looking at uh, roughly 7 seconds of slow as well as gaining the Major Prophecy buff as well as activating uh, prism for an extra three ultimate every six seconds we're also running on our back bar we're running power of the light and that has a tool tool tip of 18k but it also gives us the minor fractures for both um, physical as well as spell resistance so in total we are negating 6600 both physical resistance as well as spell of course so that it correlates to an extra 10 percent damage so both our magic abilities as well as our physical abilities will do 10% more damage. We're running uh, Front Bar Radiant um, that scales at 50% and we're running Radiant Glory for that for the 20% heal. This is really good, it works out really well as we're going through our rotation. Once our opponent reaches roughly around 30%, we get some added pressure with uh, Radiant Glory and of course you always want to make sure that Power of the Light is on your opponent. And then of course, the, one of the best things about it is that we're able to take advantage of Honor the Dead. Our Honor the Dead is sporting almost 10k. Of course, that gets better uh, once we get a little bit lower health. And we only want to cast this ability when we are at 75% health because it will return 60% of, the, dam of the, uh, of the cost to us over the next 6 seconds. Six seconds which will provide us with a large amount of sustain for our Magicka. And then on our back bar, we are also running Restoring Focus, which gives us our, our major armor buffs, as well as regening 240 stamina every one second. And of course, if we're standing in it, we gain an extra percent um, to our healing. We're also running Forward Momentum, as our back bar is a two-handed weapon. So we're running forward momentum that has an 1100 tooltip and CP. And of course on our front bar, we are running defensive stance. This reduces the amount of damage as well as the amount it costs us to block, but it also provides us with a stun. And this works out really well when you're fighting against a mage build or against a night blade coming out of stealth with a spectral bow proc as it will reflect spectral bow which is great uh, as well. So it will reflect it to them and it provides us with a four second stun. This works out really well in working in a front bar combo instead of uh, using binding, binding Javelin, which costs more. It costs almost 1300 more uh, than defensive rune. And so that's why I have this on our front bar versus the absorption uh, morph. It's really good also defensively if you're fighting say a Sork or um, another mage bill using range attacks because you can use this stun and then go onto your back bar to rebuff put power of the light on as well as putting your reflective to give you enough time to go back into your front rotation of a light attack pierce armor bash waiting for your opponent to be able to cc them into a dawnbreaker 
Radiant Glory. That's basically the combo. We want to keep our buffs up, make sure we light attack to proc our glyph, uh, and then power the light reflective into a into a light attack pierce armor combo. So this build works really well. We're running Flawless Dawnbreaker on the back bar because it gives us 5% while slotted as well as giving us another 3% from the passive. Giving us an extra 8% to our weapon damage as well as an 8% to our physical damage, uh, to our spell damage. So it's a really good option. I run it on both bars so that we gain the damage on both bars. And of course, this is a flex spot, but it works out really well in case your resources get too low. We're running Deep Thoughts from the Sigic Order skill line that gives us HP as well as restoring our magic and our stamina, regenerating 1900 every one second. This works out really well because while we're channeling that ability uh, from the Sigic Order line, we gain both the Concentrated Damage Shield, which is 2500 in CP, uh, excuse me, which is 2500 in Cyrodiil, as well as reducing the damage that we take by 30% because while you're casting or channeling a Sigic Order ability, you gain major protection. So that works out really well for us to get some added resources on our back bar. Uh, it's a very it's a very tanky build. A lot of our mitigation is coming from running four pieces of sturdy. Of course, you want to gold out your armor. I am currently in the middle of golding out my armor right now. I have most of my gear um, is golded out, but I need to gold out these sturdy pieces that I'm running, as well as finish golding out this weapon on the back bar. Um, if you, I, I currently just need to transmute. I've transmuted this one. I need to transmute this two over. So I currently have a little bit more health than I really want to, and I want to hit that sweet spot of uh, 30k stamina. As you can see, there, fully buffed up. As I said, we're running in in the rune. We're running almost 30,000 spell resistance, close to 27,000 physical resistance. And because most of our um, resistance is coming from being able to block, of course, it's situational block. This is not a perma block build. So we could actually use our defensive rune to reflect like fire wheel or frags or other light attacks, or just use block to block incoming CCs like wrecking blow or snipe spam. And then using javelin when our opponents are at range to get a little breather, get a little line of sight. And then of course, going right into um, deep thoughts to regen some of our uh, resource pools. Like I was saying before, on this build, as you can see, I have 30, 35, 76 on the front bar, and then we're running 31, 75 on the back bar. So we're gonna go ahead and light attack, animation cancel into our light attack pierce armor bash. And that's basically how you're going to be providing combat this build primarily works with knowing how to animation cancel which is very important um, to be able to get the most amount of damage um, from this build and so if you if you don't know how to animation cancel then you're gonna have a hard time with this build as a lot of the damage comes from weaving in that light attack and of course the glyph is gonna proc we're gonna get that bash damage and we're gonna do some really good damage to our opponent and of course being able to heal with honor of the dead on our front bar and of course we'll have the hot from forward momentum and of course the ability to get out of snares as well as roots as we are in heavy armor so we're not going to be dodge rolling all that much because it's going to cost us way too much stam even though we have a lot of stam management from black rose from restoring focus as well as the glyph on the front bar and of course heavy attacks our heavy attacks will of course gain the benefit of the revitalized passive when you're when you're wearing uh, five pieces of heavy of course we'll be able to return an additional 25 percent uh, stamina from our heavy attacks so that's roughly about 2800 in no cp um, and that's basically this build it works out really well i've been playing it for the past couple of days in stream Feel free to give me a like and a follow on YouTube. I do stream very regularly on Twitch. My Twitch is, will be linked in the description. 
and it's infamous underscore underscore NYC. I am uh, currently streaming uh, The Elder Scrolls Online, doing many different build videos uh, for the current meta. Unfortunately, with the way things are going now in PvP because of the changes to Torox Pack and the way um, the way the glyphs are working, you may not enjoy the meta as if you're on console and you haven't uh, had the opportunity to play it. It may be a little disheartening, but hopefully I'm looking forward to Zenimax making some adjustments to way um, to the way that the glyphs proc so that PvP will be a little bit more competitive than the way it currently is. As it's pretty cancerous right now, I'm really not enjoying it. Um, I do enjoy this build. This is also a great PvE build if you're looking for a hybrid, kind of like a paladin type playstyle with sword and shield and of course utilizing your magic abilities. This works really well. Um, you're, you're fairly fairly tanky. You're able to block for long periods of time. Your resource management in PvE is fantastic as well as you're able to put out damage and do some off healing. Uh, I've been able to tank many of the normal dungeons. I've done uh, some of the, the hard modes. And of course, for a casual player, that's what that's basically what you're looking for. Something that's fun. It's very viable. It's very strong. Uh, I would recommend it for anybody who's looking for a different sort of gameplay, as I do enjoy playing hybrid. And of course, I want to do everything that I can to show you that hybrid builds are definitely viable in the Elder Scrolls Online. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Feel free to like this video, uh, give me a follow, and of course, check me out on Twitch at infamous underscore underscore NYC. Thank you.